Hello, I'm Noel Starrick. I'm an entomologist and I've been collecting insects since I was six years old. Today I'm going to show you how you can pin insects onto pinning boards and how you can put them into a display box and end up with a collection over a period of time looking like this. Now that we have our insect we need to kill it. So we put it in a killing jar which contains a chemical called ethyl acetate or you can use nail polish remover non-acetone that has ethyl acetate in it so we place the insect in and then close down the lid and we leave it there for about two hours after two hours it's important that we set the wings before they start to harden now I'm going to show you how to pin a butterfly the first thing you do is pick the butterfly up by the wings very gently and then the next thing you do is you get yourself an entomological pin and you very carefully find the centre of the thorax. It's very important that we put the pin properly through the body. Now this varies with different insects but with butterflies it's important that we put it through the centre of the thorax and it's at 90 degrees to the body and straight. So when you go to put the pin in the collection it'll look nice and neat. And the next step is to separate the wings if you can, it sometimes is difficult. What I normally do in this situation is I tend to get the pin top and press it into the pinning board. Take a piece of tracing paper, and these are little strips that have already been cut, and you place it on the wings of the butterfly, put in a couple of pins to hold the, the wings down and you do the same on the other side. Now that we've got the papers in place we can start to pull the wings around. So what we've got to do is we pull the forewing around until the bottom of the forewing is at 90 degrees to the body. And once we have that in position then we move the back wing so it comes just underneath the forewing and then we put a pin through it to hold it in place. Then we turn the insect around the other way and then we pull this forewing around so it's 90 degrees to the body. And the next important step is to the antennae to set them so they look like they're neatly placed. And this is important because it's also part of identification. So we end up with a butterfly pin. Now we're going to pin a grasshopper. Now this is slightly different to what we did with the butterfly. Uh, firstly, when we're putting the pin through, we don't put it through the centre of the body, we put it to one side. Now the reason for this is that on the, underneath of a grasshopper there is characteristics that we need for identification. So if we were to put the pin through the centre, we may damage that characteristic. So we put it through on the right hand side of the thorax. So, and the pin is 90 degrees to the insect. I usually pull the wings out first because the board here is very different to most boards. This one here has got a groove down the centre. This one we only want to pin one side of the uh, grasshopper's wings. So what we do, we place the wings near enough to where they're going to go and then we push the pin in. Then we get a piece of tracing paper and we pull the wings around so where it's approximately 90 degrees to the body again and we make sure that the wing is properly spread so we can see the venation and that's important also for identification. Secure the wings and the next part of the uh, pinning is to get the legs in a position for identification again. Now we try and set the second pair of legs away from the underneath the body so we can see them and the same with the foreleg. And then the next aspect that we work on is the antennae. We pull them round so that they are looking in a normal position. And there we have the grasshopper pinned. The last insect that we're going to pin is a beetle. And the location of the pin this time is different again. Where we put the pin is through the right hand wing, three quarters of the way up towards the thorax and in the centre of the wing. 
And the reason we do that is underneath the thorax, there's some characteristics that we need to be able to see to do identification. So having pressed the pin through, we then put it through so it's three quarters of the way up the pin, and then we press it right in so the beetle is flat on the material that you're pinning on. And then we set the legs. And it's important to try and get the beetle to look like it would in, in its natural state. And you can do this by just pulling the legs around and securing them with pins. I always do the back legs first because they're the easiest. And fortunately on this one, the four legs are quite nicely positioned. We bring the antenna and pin that around. Now on this beetle, it's one of them's broken off a bit, so you're not going to really see it, the whole of it. And then there's labial palpi, and sometimes we can, we can pull those around. I don't think we're going to be able to do it with this one, but we secure the antennae. And there's the beetle pin. The next step is we need to put a label on each of these insects that we've pinned. And we place a pin through the centre of it and we put it beside the insect and that stays with the insect until it is dry. We need to put the location, in other words the city, and in this case it's Brisbane, Queensland. We need to put roughly where it is, in this particular case it's six kilometres northwest of Brisbane. And then we have to put the date. Now it's important that we put the full year because if we don't do that it is possible to look at insects that occurred back in 1811, 1911 and 2011. So we need to have the date correct. The next thing we can do is we put the longitude and latitude and then the name of the collector, the person who collected the insect. After three weeks when the insects dried, we then can take the specimen off the pinning board and we can carefully remove the pin with the paper still on it. We then take the label and place it on the underside of the insect, 12 millimetres from the point of the pin, and then we transfer it to the collection. Now, having put the insect in the collection, there's another thing we must do. There are insects that will eat the dried insects, so we need to put naphthalene, or commonly called mothballs, secure them in the collection. We also need to put something in there to stop the mould, and this is called chlorocreosol. Um, it may be a little bit difficult to get, but uh, it stops any mild growing on the insects. Happy collecting.